Well, let's practice using a protractor. And right here, I've got the diagram from exercises 11 through 14 in our textbook. And I have a protractor that resembles the protractor that I will give you. It's a paper protractor we know from our HSGQE testing. In this particular case, the vertex of the protractor is right there. Mind you, not all protractors are the same, but that's how this one is, works. So I'm going to place the vertex on point F. And I could line up this protractor, in this case, to measure J, F, L. I could measure it. I can see it 90 degrees from its current orientation, or I could actually turn it this way. And I can measure the 90 this way, 30, 60, 90. Either way, I can see that this one is obviously 90 degrees, and this is a right angle. All right, easy enough. Let's speed it up. Now we're looking for G, so I'm going to rotate the protractor this way, F and H. Well, let me count these. I've got 10, 20, I've got 30 here. 40 here, 50 here, and this looks like it's going to come out on 60. Oh, fifth, I said 60. There you go. And we would classify that as an acute angle. All right, easy enough. Let's leave the protractor there because we are going to go G, F, K. Now, I would count in these increments. Uh, I know first off from here to here is not um, from here to here is 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 135. So I've got 135 degrees, must be an obtuse angle. And finally, G, F, L. Now, without even measuring this, we know we can assume collinearity from a diagram. So that makes this 180 degrees, also known as a straight angle. And there you go. Nice little review. Exercises number 15 through 18 in your textbook give us this diagram and asks us to give an alternate name for the given angles and classify them. Good practice. Angles ACB. We'll start with 15. We've got ACB right there. And I'm just going to highlight it like that so you can see, aha, uh -huh, that's where the red is. That's the angle. Well, clearly that's a right angle, as evidence from the right angle mark right here. And another name for it is BCA. Notice the C is the vertex, so the C must be in the middle. We cannot call it simply angle C, as there are multiple angles with that vertex. All right? Speed this up, you got the idea. Angles, ABC is in this upper right corner, and I could again call that angle CBA, classifying it as acute. All right, we got the momentum here. Let's go to the 17. Angle, BFD. Well, that looks like a three collinear points, or in other words, a straight angle. Another name for that straight angle would be DFB. Getting the idea, we're just reversing the points, but we must keep the vertex in the middle. And finally, this angle, which we're given as AEC, could also be seen as CEA, and it appears, mind you, to be obtuse. All right, that's easy enough. Let's move on. In this exercise, we're going to take ABC, plot them, and draw the resulting angle. Let's just get to it. A is clearly in the second quadrant, B is in the third, and C is in the fourth. And we draw the angle. The vertex must be at B since it's angle ABC. Now it's looking right away like an obtuse angle, but um, if there was any doubt, I could do this draw myself a horizontal and vertical ray, which I know form a right angle, and clearly ABC is greater than that, so must be an obtuse angle. Now, as far as naming a point on the interior, 
There's so many to choose from, but the obvious, I go for the origin because it's right there. Zero, zero, or the origin is on the interior. So is, for example, um, one, zero, etc. All right, let's have an algebra exercise here. I've got an acute angle, and I know the definition of an acute angle. It's got a range of greater than zero, less than 90. So it's somewhere in here. And I have a variable expression, 2x minus 12. And I'm trying to find the possible values of x. So let's start with what we know. The measure of this angle is between 0 and 90. OK, that's the definition of acute. And let's just simply perform a substitution. I'll substitute the variable expression, 2x minus 12. And now I can work all three of these expressions. Let's just add 12 to all three parts of this expression, and then divide by 2. And there you have it. x must be between 6 and 51.